I want less people to feel guilty and to feel like to judge themselves. And I want them to stop judging other people too and saying, oh, you're lazy and you're just not very bright or you don't care. It's like, no, no, they're geniuses. It really helps. So I would say to people, no, do not go out and say, I'm going to be great at the two things I'm worst at. Say, I'm going to let people know what I'm great at, know what I'm decent at and what I'm terrible at. And when they ask me to do things I'm terrible at, in short bursts, I will grind through that and let them know that I'm going to do the best I can in, in an area that's hard for me. I love that because I, I feel like such a big part of all of this, this emotional intelligence piece is just so important. And it's often missing in these environments where there's this burnout, where is this frustration? And it's not just the self-awareness. Self-awareness is great, but it's also the self-compassion. So once you recognize those strengths and weaknesses and saying, you know what, like I can be compassionate around the fact that I'm just not tenacious. I, that's not me. I will block myself off. I'll create two hours or I'm going to force myself to do it. But then after those two hours, I'm going to be compassionate to myself knowing that I put myself in a burnout state. I put myself in a place that is great frustration for me. And I think so often we we are quick to be self-awareness and like and focus on self-awareness. Like, oh, great. I know these strengths and weaknesses. And then we get really excited when we can read other people and we go, oh, I can put you in that box and I can tell you're a DG and I can tell Johnny's a WG. And we love that side of things, but we're not always good at taking these and practically using them in our life to create that work environment for ourselves and others to be most successful. Self-compassion is far more, if you stop at self-awareness, now you just know why you're, you're feeling bad about yourself sometimes, but you have to go, no, I'm actually supposed to celebrate who I am. And that's not a sixth grade poster for like, that's, that's reality. We had pastors, a couple of pastors called us up after this came out and they took it. And one guy said, I felt like a fraud for 20 years because I couldn't write a homily or a sermon to save my life. And I thought, how, how dare I be a pastor if I can't come up with a good talk? He did this. He realized I have no W or I. And then I said, well, what do you have? And he told me, I said, so you're probably a great counselor, right? And you probably are really good at working with your staff. He goes, oh, I love that. I'm like, you can't have all of these. So he said, okay, now I can borrow somebody with W and I to help me write my homilies. I'm not going to feel guilty about that anymore. And there's other pastors who say, man, I give a great homily. I don't like to do counseling. And I look at their, their work in genius. And I'm like, yeah, that's how God made you. So why don't you organize your work to the greatest extent possible to lean into your geniuses? And it changes everything. Mm -hmm.